In this video, we're just going to be talking about the nervous system and the organisation of it. A sympathetic, parasympathetic, autonomic, uh, somatic, all that jazz, so stay tuned. So, the first part of the, spe the, uh, the specification for this spread uh, says exactly, discuss why animals need to respond to their environment. So in short, the answer to this really is to stay alive. So the animals can stay alive, they can adapt to the changing environment. But this can be done by using hormones and nerves and using a range of reflexes, a range of body processes in order to stay alive. For example, if there's a rock about to hit me in the face, it's going to knock me out and kill me, I'm going to want to move out of the way. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to send some impulses along some neurons and some nerves to allow me to do that. So so the CNS literally consists of the brain and the spinal cord. This stands for our central nervous system. The PNS, on the other hand, is our peripheral nervous system. And this is essentially all of the neurons that go in and out of the CNS. So the, obviously the PNS, that means the peripheral nervous system enters the central nervous system and also leaves the central nervous system. So sensory motor neurons travel from receptors in our body in our peripheral nervous system to our central nervous system. And so the, the brain then deals with the information just been given. It's going to respond by using motor neurons, the PNS motor neurons. And these motor neurons can be can be divided into the, the somatic motor neurons and the autonomic motor neurons. Now the somatic motor neurons are ones that we control. These are our skeletal muscles, the muscles connected to our bones. We can move our arms, we're, we're in voluntary control of these. The autonomic motor neurons from the CNS go to the, go to the cardiac and the smooth muscle. So this includes the heart muscle, i.e. the cardiac. We don't really, we don't physically, we can't choose when our heart beats. It just, it just happens. And then also the smooth muscle, like the gut, the peristalsis, we can't make this happen. It just happens anyway. So, the autonomic nervous system consists of parasympathetic and sympathetic neurons. So, the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, nervous systems, the way they work, they actually work, it, well, it's, it's described as an antagonistic system, because this basically means one way will, will affect the other, it's kind of the opposite. For example, uh, decreased heart rate, uh, is one is one side one side effect of one the parasympathetic, but then you've got increased heart rate for sympathetic. Do you know what I mean? The changes kind of they oppose each other. So if you get a question in the exam saying why they described as antagonistic, it's basically because the action of one system opposes the action of another. So now I'm going to talk about the main differences between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. Now the way I'm going to help you uh, remember what one is what is by this, for example. So parasympathetic, I remember this by thinking of a paramedic. So parasympathetic, paramedic. Obviously if there's been an accident, paramedics are going to come on scene and say calm down, chill out, reduce your heart rate. So therefore that means the, the effects are likely to include a, a decreased heart rate, decreased ventilation rate, uh, and things like that. So that is what your parasympathetic nervous system is, in, in times of relaxation, not in stress. So, as stated earlier, they work antagonistically. Therefore the sympathetic nervous system is going to be obviously most active during times of stress. Obviously what I'm showing you here is just some of the physical uh, changes in the body I've described earlier. Uh, it's a decreased heart rate, pupil constriction, there's no need to let that light in. Whereas sympathetic, increased heart rate, pupils dilated, need more light to maybe to be see better, to fight off a predator, times of stress. So a ganglion is essentially where two neurons in the autonomic nervous system connect. It's like a swelling. So it says here in the book, autonomic connections to effectors always consist of at least two neurons. So that means there's two neurons going to the effector and the swelling are where that occurs, where these two neurons meet, is called the ganglion. So in the parasympathetic nervous system, it's like normal uh, ACH, acetylcholine, normal neurotransmitter to move. But in times of stress, in the sympathetic nervous system, after the neurons after the ganglion, they're going to be secreting noradrenaline. Which, uh, which has the effects of increased heart rate, pupil dilation. So if you forget one, one of these things, if you remember some of the other factors, it can actually help you to remember several other factors and properties of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. So in the sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic neurons are going to be short. Because if you've got long neurons, that means it might be a long neuron that goes up and down and around the body. It can't, it's no good if you want to get to a specific site very quickly going along all these long routes. So the more short neurons you've got, the more the route, the more the impulse can differentiate around the body quickly to get to the location. That's why it's in times of stress. Like for example, 
if you need to run away from a predator, you need to get them signals to the certain parts of the body that are going to allow you to do that as quickly as possible. If there's anything in these videos you don't understand, be sure to comment because I need to know uh, where I'm going wrong if I'm doing dodgy videos. So be sure to like and subscribe for more because I'm going to try and bang out two or three of these every day, if not at least two or one for sure. A comment on what videos you want to see next and if you're enjoying them. So thank you and I'll see you later.